Reading with your kids. Hey, 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 so great to see you. Come on in. Hi, my name is Jeff Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We are coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We are so delighted that you're joining us in our mission to help families grow closer together through reading. Thank you so very much. Please be sure to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app, on Amazon Music, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, Himalaya, Ghana, wherever you find your podcast. We're really excited. Our guest today is Michelle Wagner. She is here to celebrate her debut picture book, Mickey on the Move. Before we invite Michelle into the studio, we want to remind you that we have a special series of episodes debuting here on the Reading With Your Kids podcast beginning April 22nd. They're called Protecting the Earth With Your Kids. I'm going to be joined by my co-host, Alexia Brown, and we're going to be meeting some fantastic authors who will let us know how we can talk to our kids about climate change and, and what concrete things we can do as a family to help protect our earth. It all begins April 22nd, Earth Day, here on the Reading With Your Kids podcast. It's protecting the earth with your kids. Joining us right now from Napa Valley in California, she is the author of a great new picture book called Mickey on the Move. Please welcome to the show, Michelle Wagner. Michelle, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Jed? I'm doing pretty wonderful. I was I was going to say Michelle is on the move, moving around her house here at through our... <laughs> Never a dull moment. We're really excited to have you on. Mickey on the move. Tell us about this book, please. Well, this is just a true story, a day in the life of um, my son who was born deaf and was um, implanted with bilateral cochlear implants at the age of three. Um, He's had several different, um, been in several different schools since the implanting, um, both um, in San Francisco, Santa Rosa, and we live um, here in Napa Valley. And in fifth grade, he was finally able to be mainstreamed at the school here. That's wonderful. And so it's kind of how he navigates through um, being mainstreamed finally in the sixth, uh, it's a day in his sixth grade mm-hmm. and uh, it shows how he adapts. You know, um, this is, I, 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 I love the fact that we're able, we talk about books being mirrors, windows and sliding glass doors being a, it's important for a kid to be able to see themselves in the pages of books. I think it's also really important for us to be able to look through a book, to see somebody who is different, to experience their life so that we can start to develop some empathy and and find a connection with the with these different persons. Can you tell us a little bit about um, Mikey's experience or Mickey's experience? Um, what was it like for uh, a, a kid to be born deaf coming into this world that is so... There's so much sound all around us. We're bombarded with sound and music and conversation. Um, And to be born into that world without the ability to experience it and hear it must be very different. And to be a mom of a child who is deaf must also be pretty different and challenging. Correct. Um, First of all, you use my favorite word, which is empathy. Mm. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about that, but you know, all, we we all have challenges. Mm-hmm. I've learned in life that no one is perfect. Um, I surely am not. And um, you know, Mickey, you know, was born deaf, but his visual acuity is um, unbelievable. And I think it's always best to focus on everyone's strengths. Mm-hmm. Um, to give them a lot of positive reinforcement through whatever they're going through. And, um, you know, at first, um, Mickey was, we adopted Mickey um, from Russia, and he was in an orphanage. And uh, we actually did not know he was deaf. He was 16 months old when we met him and 18 months old when we got to bring him home. And we had doctors there and specialists. And um, 
no one, you know, let us know. But when we brought him back, we, I started making all kinds of noise and there was, he wasn't responding and an ear, nose and throat specialist here put hearing aids on him and those were not successful. And then eventually um, we got on the fast track at UCSF thanks to some good family friends. And he um, was eligible for bilateral cochlear implants, which is rare. They normally, they typically just do one at a time. Mm -hmm. uh, but they were able to do both. And so he had the surgery, and of course, when you come out of the surgery, he's hearing for the first time. Um, it's a very emotional um, thing for the whole entire family to go through because it is brain surgery on a very small child. Mm -hmm. and, and their risks are, are involved, as with anything, but the rewards have been um, extremely, um, a lot of highs and a lot of struggles. And with every challenge, um, you know, there has definitely been reward. Yeah. And I don't know any other way of, um, you asked me about how it is to be a mom of a, of a child who is different. And uh, this is all I know. <laughs> Mickey's my only child. I, uh, I, I wanted 12 kids, but I settled for one. <laughs> I wouldn't call it settled, but uh, he's amazing. He's taught me so many things in life. And for a young child, he's 12 now. Every, you know, he's had lots of testing done and different reports and through every school, every circumstance, um, the thing that is always highlighted about Mickey is his empathy. Mm -hmm. He is, has extreme empathy and, um, I mean, he's a sweet, really good boy and, you know, he doesn't think he, you know, his different, I mean, the goal, um, his, his father and I got divorced shortly after we brought him home from Russia. And um, both of our goal was for him to um, feel like a typical child, like, you know, everybody else. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I think that we've had, we've been successful in that and also successful, very successful in encouraging him um, to, that he can do anything, um, reach any goal. And, you know, he still does speech, private speech classes three times a week and, although he doesn't like to go to those, um, you know, he does it. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm his biggest advocate and cheerleader. And um, I think, you know, and a positive attitude is a key for any success. Absolutely. One of the things I want to do is I want to thank you for adopting Mickey. There, there are so many kids out there. We've had Dr. John DeGarmo on, who is a foster care expert, and he shared with us that, that on any given day here in the United States, there's over 400,000 kids, I think was the number, in foster care. There, there are millions of kids all over the world that are looking for that forever family. So for you to step up and to give Mickey that forever family... Uh, is a beautiful thing, and and I just want to acknowledge it, and and uh, I I think that's pretty wonderful and pretty special and brave, and uh, you know talk about empathy. So you know, my my heart goes out to you. You know, thank you for doing that. It makes the world a better place when we can help people find love and find find a forever home. I've seen videos on social media of young kids hearing for the first time they've they've either been fitted with hearing aids that finally worked or had the implant and they are amazing um uh, can you share a little bit more about that moment when you were there and and mickey was able to hear for the first time and and what your reaction was and what his reaction was it was a little overbearing i mean it was you know you you hope it's gonna work and and right away they only turn the cochlears up a little bit. They're like, you know, it's like wearing a little computer mm -hmm. on your on your ear. And, um, you know, it's just like amazing. It's like seeing fireworks for the first time or something. And, you know, he's confused and very young. And, um, you know, we don't know what he's hearing. And, you know, but there's there's um, like an overabundance of, of joy and excitement. Mm -hmm. um, going on and and you know I actually sometimes can't believe that that we come this this far that this much time has you know gone on and you know he's a very enduring boy and you know I think 
he he's just really positive about it all and uh he couldn't speak right away or really understand and um but you know we did sign language for a little while and uh, we went to some special camps him and i and we still go to them and um you know it's real grit mm-hmm. <laughs> that uh that's gotten us and love that's yep. gotten us through the i mean i mean i think that we were meant to be um together him and i and uh go through this and and i'm just glad he's happy and still um you know encouraged and has the courage and mm-hmm. confidence to try keep trying every day to be better and better yeah that's wonderful i'm i'm really happy to hear that that mickey was able to be mainstreamed into a classrooms uh his, his classroom into a typical classroom Back in 1989, uh, I was working with kids with severe developmental disabilities. And um, my job was to help these kids go out into the community. And these, these were kids who had a variety of, of, of different challenges. And, and for the most part, they, they weren't able to walk or communicate or really do much of anything. Um, but it was my job to help them go out and, and find ways to develop friendships and and so we were able to uh, create a very successful program on the one hand it's uh, I'm happy that it's that that Mickey was able to be mainstream on the other hand that was over 30 years ago that we made that uh, that video and it's been 30 years that the American with Disabilities Act was passed and it's still a struggle and, and it's still a celebration when when kids like Mickey are are mainstreamed and it's not Unfortunately, it's not the norm everywhere. Uh, kids with, with disabilities are still being segregated through a number of reasons. Um, uh, but uh, I, I'm happy we're making progress. But I'm, I'm afraid we're, we're not making progress, and we're not making enough progress. We're not making enough progress fast enough in terms of, of giving folks with disabilities uh, equal access to, to education and to opportunities. I, I I agree, and um, you know I'm a huge huge advocate, and do all that I can for um, you know the cochlear um, you know because they do give scholarships away, and the special mm-hmm. schools give scholarships away for cochlear Americas, and um, also um, for people trying to adopt. And there's just so many ways that. Um, the people who are more fortunate can actually help help and and give help. But um, I have to say it's really the time and dedication of the parent, of mm-hmm. the person involved, or if the parent is working, if a family member, because it is a is an entire family mm-hmm. that that has to be um, it takes a village mm-hmm. and literally and you know the one for the most fortunate thing about Mickey when he was finally mainstreamed here where we live is we had already been on sports Mm -hmm. um, and with these other children. And because I work and know the other parents and I'm a a big part of the community, he already knew the children that he was going to get mainstreamed with. And they're so kind. And, you know, it's not like, you know, no one's really making fun of anybody. Mm -hmm. and, and, And there's all sorts of things, you know, kids that wear glasses, you know, a, a child in a wheelchair, perhaps, and and everybody is treated, you know, equally. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's that's the most, you know, the most important thing is inclusivity. And you know, I think that's up to the adults. I really do. And and I'm just um, fortunate to live in this great community. Yeah. Well, that was one of the things that we found in our experience uh, in working in that program that, was, that I was mentioning. The, the, all the roadblocks that were thrown up were thrown up by adults. Mm-hmm. And uh, they, they were usually using kids as the excuse. You know, it's, uh, and, and we were, uh, because the, the idea was so kind of out there at that time, uh, the only school that we were able to kind of 
work with. The only typical school we were able to get to work with us at that time was a school that had all sorts of challenges to begin with. You know, the very, very uh, the, the highest number of kids from uh, families with single parents, highest number of kids with parents uh, with one parent incarcerated, drug problems, and all that. Um, but but even so, the adults would stand up and say, oh, well, those kids in that school, they're going to be cruel to your kids with disabilities. They're going to make fun of them. Or it's uh, they're not going to understand and the, these kids and these kids. And the reality was that the kids were easy. You know, when I, when I would bring, bring in one of my students and introduce them to the kids in the typical classroom, uh, they were like, oh, cool. What's, how, come, how come she does this? How come he does that? Okay, fine. And that was all it took. And then the friendships just blossomed from there. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. usually that has to happen, you know, at a very young age. Mm-hmm. And, um, but it's, it's, it's important, you know, and, and, you know, the, the more diversity, um, the richer the culture. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. I'm I'm excited because I think that Mickey on the Move is a wonderful resource for families to sit down to to start having conversations about what we've been talking about it, about being inclusive, encouraging their kids. Hey, if there's somebody different in your classroom, what can you do to help that that person feel more comfortable? How can you help them feel welcome? Empowering our kids to you know kind of be the ones to step up, step up and have the courage to welcome people who seem different. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think so too. I mean, I think, I mean, that was one of the reasons the inspirations for it was um, awareness. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, bringing awareness about all sorts of different, uh, all sorts of things. But the more, the more you know, the more you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they say, and I believe that. So I'm guessing that you you didn't grow up thinking that you'd be a children's author. No, <laughs> I did not. I, I didn't think I was going to be three years ago mm-hmm. or two years ago, probably. So, <laughs> but like I tell Mickey, you could do it. You could do anything. There, the sky is the limit, mm-hmm. and there is no no stopping a person that that has um, that's determined. Mm-hmm. And, and also, you know, one thing is, you know, I had a a great, a grandiose idea. You know, I had, I wanted to be an astronaut when I was really young. And then I just wanted to be the first lady. And, and then, you know, as I got older, I mean, but I, I believed, you know, I could be anything. And I think that was instilled for me and my parents. And, and, you know, my first job was babysitting. And then of course, you know, bagging groceries at a grocery store. And I was never, um, you know, one thing, and I don't know how my parents did, you know, I never thought I was too good for anything or anybody. And the realization that you have to start somewhere and climb your way, way up or you don't, don't realize, you know, I mean, an empathy is created there too. Mm-hmm. If you, if you don't, you know, I, I know that today and with, you know, helping Mickey and everything he's going through and other parents um, and other children is that um, the more interaction you have with people, you know, at, at very, you know, movie stars to very high, high level scientists and laboratories or in politics or just, you know, the little old lady next door. There's so much wisdom that all of those people that can teach us. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I'm just really grateful that um, my parents made me work hard and earn everything. And, um, and you know, Mickey, Mickey too. I, I mean, he is definitely treated like a, a typical child. He has his chores. He does not get an allowance. <laughs> Um, you know, he gets a lot of love and the school that he's at now actually, um, is, is a Montessori school. So it's like a farm school. Mm-hmm. They call him the animal whisperer. Ah. And, um, he's just very, very sweet with the animals, but he definitely appreciates and nobody is like, 
in the family, like, oh, you know, poor Mickey has this mm-hmm. or anything like that. I mean, and I and I think that that's the you know best thing that y- you could do for anyone. Mm-hmm. And um, and if I had to do my life all over again, I think I would do it the same way. Mm-hmm. And um, maybe try and start having kids younger so I could have more. <laughs> yeah, but. Well, this is really, uh, I, I, I love this message, and I think it's, it's really important for us to help our kids understand that, that we're all part of this beautiful human family. Uh, we may look different, we may have different abilities, um, may have different challenges, but we all have challenges, we all have abilities, and we can all give something to each other. And, uh, and, 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 and I love that, that Mickey is out there. I love that he's making friends. And I love that Mickey on the move is available to help families have conversations, uh, about these great, tar- really important topics. Michelle, where can folks go to find out more about Mickey on the move and, uh, and, and, and how they can help their kids develop that empathy that what we, that we've been talking about? So, um, Mickey on the Move, you could buy it on Amazon. Um, I just had, I just went into the third, third, third print, third edition print. You could buy it online through Amazon, online through Barnes and Noble, and there are a lot of different bookstores, uh, local bookstores that are carrying it. Um, so you can get it anywhere. There's a Mickey on the Move Instagram and, uh, <laughs> also, that's and, um, yeah, just wonderful. spread the word. And- we definitely want to spread the word, encourage folks to check out Mickey on the Move, a great new picture book from our guest, Michelle Wagner. Michelle, thanks so much for being part of the show. Thank you, Jed. I, I really I had fun, and I hope you have a great day, and hopefully this will inspire many more um, moms and dads to uh, write a book. Please be sure to join us for the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be coming to us from right outside of Dallas in Texas. Her name is Kenna Sosa. She'll be here to celebrate Ray Antonio y Ray Feo. That's the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. If you are the author of a fantastic children's book, we would love to have you as a guest on the show. Being a guest, it's fun, it's easy, and it gives you the opportunity to tell thousands of people about your fantastic children's book. All you need to do is to go to our website, readingwithyourkids.com, click in the Authors Click Here button, scroll on down to where it says Be a Guest. I want to thank the folks who made today's show so very, very wonderful. Of course, I want to thank our guest, Michelle Wagner. Be sure to check out Mickey on the Move. It is a Reading With Your Kids certified great read. I also want to thank my team, Alejandro Doherty, Fatima Khan, Alexia Brown, Hannah Pat Oboiski. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. Most of all, we all want to thank you. We want to thank you because you are helping to make our world a better place every time you read with your kids. I'll be looking through the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.